push photo. Good for the all gardeners everywhere to see a nice bit of blossom. Makes all the difference. And that was a blossom there. That's Beth, my pear tree. Top of the garden. Quite a bit of blossom about. This is from last week. Be a little right up in the sun, which was better than nothing. But they did it eventually put me, uh, me right up in a, a piece of the sun itself. But uh, not what I would have liked more. Evening, Mickey. Thank you so much for your wonderful talk last week. I could not believe how much you loved your compost. You inspired all of us. Making our own has to be the way forward for all sensible gardeners, given the poor alternative that you can buy. Also, it is easy to make. We're always looking forward to some uh, settled weather so we can enjoy working in our garden game. With best wishes, Linda. Email I had from one of my talks last week. And Stonnell, always good to have. Right, propagator in the greenhouse. Uh, <clears throat> it's obviously top a part of the season now where the propagator is always chocker. So there's a few here on the bottom. I'm just looking at the these are canners, obviously canner seeds, and they did start to spurt. That's why I'm um, obviously individually potted them on into plastic drinking cups, but they they just went soggy, dumped off. So get up on them. So I'm just down to what's left now. Uh, this is another test with the clover compost, and that's Regal, the P3 compost. So obviously, he's, he's not on par with the clover. Don't forget, there's a bit of grub in clover. There's no grub in Regal at all. So at least I'm coming anyway. Uh, need a bit of potting on. So I have full-size seed tray, 15 tray inserts, and my plastic drinking cups sit perfectly in these. That's why I like using these. And plastic drinking cups. So there's them lot there, which is my uh, Cape Gooseberry. And there's them two, which we've just seen there. So I've got to split up. Luckily, I've got an um, electric up with the greenhouse. So greenhouse temperature still might be, be a bit cold if we had a cold night. So I've got a kettle up there. My mixture. Let me grow in, which I've been using now for quite a bit. That's all mixed together. Got me two trays ready. Right, let's start uh, dividing these. This is the old Snapdragon. These are a tall mixed. These will be ready for our bring them by next month. Also, I want some of these to put down by our trading sheds. Make it look nice for next year. So I'm splitting these up. Obviously, got to work out how many I need for me, the cups and the trays. Got a nice little bunch in each. Pushing the compost in around the outside. I don't want to knacker them young roots up. Yeah, I do. Next slot for the next trays. Then give me a nice watering outside, which I've just done. Like most things, they're going to go limp. Until uh, they'll pick up after a couple of days. Now, again, gentlemen, once a month, have a piddle in a jug. Make sure it's nice and clear. If there's any little chaps swimming around, you need to go and see the quack. Right, this, <laughs> has, been, this has been made from uh, Manila. And in Bilal, he's a good lad. Obviously, Cole understand that because he's a. Uh, but he is a no dig man and he's all raised beds. And you know, it just makes out, it's hoping that a bit. He's using pebbles, rocks, stones as a raised bed. Or he, he, he can't get no boards or bricks or nothing. If you really think I but he's not going to tread on oh, it. Mate. Somebody just come on. Can you show your mark off, please? Thank you so much. But he's a, he's a good lad. Uh, we follow each other. Learn from each other. Uh, and from that last one there, I sent him a love it. 
Thanks me, Paul. We still have a lot to learn from uh, excellent mentors like you. The secret to farming is definitely in the soil. Take care. I'm really up to you may visit the Philippines soon. I'd like to know. Uh, ben went back down to London last week. Luckily, he's, he's got another mate who's going to put him up for a while. But he had to leave last time because the uh, money couldn't do it, the cost of it. He was paying over a grand a month, and that was three of them in one um, apartment. It's, it's gone crack, crap down there. Anyway, he's found a mate while he can do it. He's gone back down there. He's got his store down there. But before he legged it, he cleaned the our top bay, uh, bay window in the bedroom. He's a good lad. Paul, you all ready, Rag? I am, yes. Good man, good man. All yours. Right, uh, evening all. Um, just uh, a, a few photos of... Um, I don't know whether you saw the, uh, the progress that I was doing with my onions, but this... This year, I'm trying to grow a big onion. Never done it before. Started off in the uh, small grow tent that I've got with a 600 looms light uh, in sort of October time last year. Uh, put the seeds in there. There's no heat other than the lights, but it is indoors. So I would say it probably never goes under 10, 12 degrees. Um, the, the previous photo showed how they was going. These now, um, well, to, to probably give you a, a size, they're probably, they look very, very leggy, but I've been told by various people that they're okay. Um, never done it before, so I don't really know. Any comments on that, please let me know. But uh, I'd say, to me, they look leggy, but I've, I've been told reliably by a few people that not to worry, just let them go. But if I was to lift them flags up, those those sticks that you can see there are actually um, meter long sticks. So I would say that there may be four, four and a half feet if you were to straighten the flags out and lift them up. Mm -hmm. um, which I, th I think that's a bit too long, but anyhow, we'll see what happens. But they've gone out now in the polytunnel. They went out four days ago. And uh, let's see what happens. Uh, in the foreground there, that's what I'm currently feeding them with. Um, I tend to do a very weak feed with that, more or less every single watering. Um, it's, it's from the guys at Evaponic. Uh, they've been sponsoring me for the last three or four years now, so... I've had good results with their stuff, so I just stick with it. I have put stuff into the into the medium that I put in there as well. Um, so uh, there's a lot of uh, vermiculite in the clover compost, and it was uh, seaweed meal, two small scoops of that, uh, six months brochure. Uh, put two scoops of that in, 10 ml scoops these are. Uh, 10 ml scoop of mycorrhizal and what else did I put in there um, I think that's it actually yeah so there should be enough feed in the soil itself um, but we'll see what happens we'll, we'll go with that see what happens okay Mick so that should get them going <laughs> hopefully yeah yeah well I hope, hope that they'll like uh, smash the record but you never know Clear yeah. the kill or cure, wasn't it? That's what they say. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. That that with the length of the the flags, that that could be the the strain of onion. All oh, right. Well, that this this is actually um, I don't really remember saying, but this is actually uh, Nick Brakes strain. Oh. So that guy last year took the world record with the uh, Nick Brakes strain, didn't he? So uh, yeah. They they all came off that onion that I bought at our gardening club. Do you remember when he come up and yeah put some onions in? So yeah. uh, I purchased that, put it down for seed, and uh, I'll tell you what: every single seed that I've put in a pot to to plant, I give some to Jimmy as well. Every single one has germinated. Yeah, there's no eat and miss. Throw them in the pot, bit of soil on the top, 
and they've all germinated. Good. They've, they've been fantastic at germination. So uh, uh, it's in the lap of the gods, isn't it? Yeah. These are the uh, these are the shallots that I had off Colin. Um, they're already in the ground up in the allotments and have been for probably two months now. Uh, I'm quite pleased with the way they're going. Again, don't normally do very well with shallots, but I've been uh, I've been spraying them with the uh, for, for, I think it's called Provanto now. I think it used to be called Provado. Yeah, but it's called Provanto now, I think, and uh, mm. comes in a very small bottle, and you only put like a, I think it's 0.25 or something uh, mils to a liter, um, and I'm spraying them regularly with that because that's all that's all I can get. I can't get anything the farmers get, so um, hopefully that'll stop the fly and everything. Uh, and again, we'll see. We'll see what happens with them. But uh, at the moment, I'm quite happy with the way they are going. Okay, Mick. Good. Uh, these are Red Baron onion set. Um, they were pushed straight into the ground about three or four weeks ago. And as you can see, they're just poking their heads out now. Um, I don't know whether I'm a bit late with them, early with them or what. I've, I've no idea. But from reading on the internet, it seems about the right sort of yeah, time. It's about to, the right time, yeah. Yeah, to start them. So yeah. I, I've just shoved them in the ground there, and uh, and they're just they're just poking through now. I did dig one up to see what the roots were like on it, and it got lovely, uh, lovely thick white roots on it. Um, before I I actually planted them in, uh, I dug the hole and sprinkled a bit of uh, Vitex Q4 Professional in the hole. Um, and then just pushed them straight in and burst them up. So uh, they've got a bit of feed there as well to start them off. So uh, we'll, again, we'll see what happens with them. Good. Okay. Uh, these are, oh, is it, are they called Golden Glow shallots? Ones from Taylor's. Oh. I think I think that's what they are. They've been in the greenhouse a bit. Bit too long though, possibly by the look of Golden Gourmet, I think it's called. Oh yeah, yeah, that sounds better. Yeah, Golden Gourmet. Yeah. Um some of them just rotted off straight away. So uh that was all I managed to get out of them. I think it was seven. And a mouse decided to uh to chew them up as well while they were in the greenhouse, believe it or not. Never seen that happen before, but we've got a we've got a mouse in our greenhouse that'll it, it'll eat anything. It, it, it's not yeah. it's not it's vegetarian as well as it'll eat anything literally. Is SAS then? SAS mouse, yeah, yeah. We can't well and we don't get rid of it, but yeah. <laughs> um that's my uh giant rhubarb that I've been growing for years. I've actually won a couple of things at Malvern with earlier on with the sticks, but everybody now seems to be producing stuff that's like two or three times bigger than the stuff I can produce, but um, that just had a, a sack of, well, rotted horse manure chucked over it. Um, it's been in that, well, I inherited the the um, the allotment from a guy who'd had it for 20, 30 years. So that's been ex in that same place for God knows how long. Uh, never dug it up, never done nothing with it. Um, I did notice that the soil had, had, had subsided quite a lot last year. So I put a bit of soil on it and chucked a, a big bag of well rotted horse manure on it. And um, that's where we are at the moment. That is as of what, yesterday or the day before, was it? I don't know, me. Yeah, day before the call. Yeah, but plenty of uh, bind weed in there, as you can see, and brambles and everything else, which, which I suffer with uh, really bad. But well, well, we'll keep an eye on that, see how that goes as well. It has been massive in the past, but I don't know. Does it have a does it have a lifespan? This stuff or what? My first allotment, mine was on there twenty four years. When I moved allotments, I took that with me, and, and that's still going strong now. That, yeah, that so just it, keep going and going. Yeah. So that that just keep I mean, feeding that... them. End of the season. Take all the old. 
crap off the, the uh, dead leaves, compost yeah. them, and then just cover it with manure. Now, I was the first one to have a, have a rhubarb. If they, if they come earlier on the shoots, they get a forecast of frost. Just put more manure on top of straw. Yeah. When you only burn the tops like it does with taters, we get a, a late frost. But they come back again. And I was the first to be picking and the last. Because oh, right. I well, also... That... I also feed me my uh, rhubarb throughout the growing season. Yeah, I, I last year I was giving it some some of the hydroponic nutrients and that. Yeah. Um. So every time I fed the the rest of the stuff, I fill the watering can up and give give it to that as well. So uh, That's it, they, they they get the same stuff as everything else. So yeah. Um, I, I think that might be it. I don't know. Is it? Yeah. Cheers, yeah. Paul. Man. Welcome. Good man. Ben sent me this photo. This is uh, luckily his new pad is in with his mate, mates. They've got a bit of a back garden, and he, he took a bit of film. And this little chap he said, "I think it looks like a J." I said, "I, I can't put the film on. Can you send me a photo?" And he just took this photo from the bit of film. And is that a J? Yeah, it is a J. Oh, yes, it is, Mick. Boston little chap, are they? And he comes back every day. There's <clears> so much <throat> in there he likes. Or is it, is it me or she? They both look the same, both male and female. Ah. They um they take all the eggs and baby birds out of the out of the nests around, so they're absolute pirates. Are they? I thought the bloody yeah. magpies were the most evil. Well they're they're as bad as magpies. Are they? Yeah. Bloody Nora. Nature. Yeah. Right, back to me canners. These chaps are going to our meeting. Well, it was just last weekend. So, no uh, sunny day, then these dry up. So, I've got to keep me on them. I wait to wise. Okay, Gooseberry, I'm going to take some of these seedlings to the our meeting as well. So, these need splitting, which I've done there. Holding them up by a leaf, not the stem. The stem, you know, squash it or break it. If a leaf comes off, but it shouldn't do, then uh, that's going to grow back again. So I potted them on just to give them a, a pick me up because I've just disturbed them in the propagator for a, a day or so. Lid on, still got the op uh, automatic, not automatic vents, but the vents open as far as they go. I don't want that getting too musty inside there. Uh, nice afternoon, there ain't no wind or rain, so these will be put in outside. And then when I do bring them inside, as you see, the sun's out there, but not underneath. But afternoon, mid-afternoon, the sun is over here. So them lot will get the sun then. Mick. Obviously, yes. The giant cape, you know, how big do they grow? Because I'm growing... I'm growing it then. I grew one last year, end of the tunnel. But what I told Arlo when I dished him out, if, if you ain't got much room, just, just train him and prune him. Tell him where to go. But yeah. he, he did he did go about four or five foot. If I'd have left, let it. And probably the four foot either, either four it's foot not, out. So it's two a foot good size. It's good. I'm a Boston size. Yeah. Paul the got me onto these. Got. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm I propagated them by the roots. Uh, yes, Paul. Mon. Paul, you got your hand up. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. I couldn't get it off. Um, the uh, the one you get us that did come to about five foot last year. Yeah, easily didn't do a lot with it to be honest. Did it? And it and it must have got to it must have gone to five foot as well across like you said. Uh, um, I didn't I didn't really give it the feed that I should have. I don't think because uh, I didn't get an awful lot of fruit on it. Well, you saw the fruit I'd have mine, didn't you? Not yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm gonna try a little bit harder with it because Jared come back with one. Yeah. From uh, from the meeting on on Thursday, so. Uh, yeah, we'll get that animal. We'll, we'll we'll give it a better um better go oh. this time. Good man, little chap in the 
Uh, kitchen, obviously, during the morning, he gets the sun, which is what I want. But I've uh, been feeding all through, as you can see. New fruit coming on. Good lad. That's what I want. Oh, not back onto food. Corn dog ash. Uh, tin of corned beef, grated, chopped onion, grated cheese. Usually we mash tater, but it's had a swede and sweet potato in as well. That lot is mixed together, thrown in a pan, bunged in the oven. Different stuff I've had from, uh, obviously, uh, uh, peat-free materials that you get. And this, I don't know, I had a good nose at it. It just looked like dead moss to me, but it worked. We want it come in. Hey, look at that. Mm. Beans, because it's been dry. <laughs> oh. Anyway, that was the advert. <laughs> <laughs> but these are me gladiolite <laughs> cormlets, if you remember. I was going to put them outside, but they did forecast a frost. So I bought them all in dogs. Have we had a frost since? No. We you know, see the little chaps are coming through. There's one there. There's one down there, all of them lot are glued. But uh, they are starting to go through. Oh, yeah, you can see the sun is now on them. Right, this is the little last week. They had one screen left. Uh, I think it was 12 quid. And I, I didn't look at the... Because I, I knew the length of this. And I, cause I didn't... The last lot I bought. I bought two. I didn't have a look at the length. But I can do that lot with one length. But they'd only got one in your own. Know. So, no, right, yes, poor man. They got loads of them in being and Muriel. Oh, I don't need one now. Knocked down. Never mind. Oh, that's a, a big place. I hit the one in Merrybone. Yeah, the old V and Q. I think that that size you had was about eight quid. Oh, I got knocked down because they got loads of gardening stuff in as well, didn't they? Oh man, you want to go in? They got loads of feed. I'm thinking now, Wilco's got. Tomatoes. Yeah. Were, you know, they got it. Oh. Uh, this is the cats getting over, plus a bit of a wind break. With a bloody wind we've had. Jesus. Well, anyway, this was a windless day. I didn't see the sun was out. So instead of dropping him on the floor, which I did last time, I've just stapled him. So I've got, I've got a bit more height. Because it stops Roosh and jumping up there as well. You think mm. smell as a cat been over or the British squirrel on exit. Rolling, you're yeah, up next, mate. Is he going to have I've muted myself? <laughs> what yours, Rolling? Uh, well, all I got this week is a few sorted out me um, stump carrots. So, as you can see, uh, filling the beds the lazy way, JCB and his knife, cut the bottoms of the bags. And it goes in, saves an awful lot of shoveling when you get to my age. Uh, and obviously, it's just sharp sand. In uh, I don't know what I've said about these uh, these frameworks before. With my lad with his roofing business, they use these when they put skylights along corridors. So he's got a load of them spare. So uh, they made just a nice plastic insulated pit to put the um, sharp sand and the carrots in. So it's never going to rot being made of plastic. Oh, uh, good idea. Yeah, next one, mate. Well, and there we are, all in and all levelled. You can see I'll put a ratchet strap around it to hold it together while I filled it so it didn't sort of all burst all over the place. But that's filled, watered, waiting for it to settle before I start coring them out. And the next one, I might say, is only, obviously I've got a template that fits all four boxes. Uh, you get two dozen in each one at the... Um, uh, seven inch centers, they are. That's what uh, basically come from Marcus Powell several years ago, and I've stuck with it and that um, measurements all the way through. And where are we? The next one, then, Mick. As you can see now, I'm sure most people know about it now. You just use the ordinary three inch down pipe to call the holes out. Um, as you can see in there, so they don't cave in on one another, which they probably won't. But being on the safe side, I sort of do every other one up there 
fill them with the compost and then do the other half, you know, yeah. so that they're not going to cave in on me as I do it. That's why I've done it. And it's just more or less showing uh, there's about to be the odd person that don't know how people do um, call the uh, centres out. So you can see how I do it anyway. And the next one? You're going down to that part there. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I've got oh, sellotape, gaffer tape around that so that that marks them. I, I call the holes out 18 inches deep, you know, rightly or wrongly. The box is about two and a half foot deep. Yeah. Um, and I, I always call it 18 inches deep. Um, the bottom of the uh, thing before the sand went on, um, I filled it up this year. It's got probably about six inches of coir in the bottom of it to try and hold some moisture in there. Um, and then obviously the sand spread on the top and it still gives me enough space to get me 18 inch uh, cores there. Yeah. And the next one, obviously to fill them, what I've done is I've had this um, cone thing for several years now. All it was was trap it cone. I'll cut it top and bottom so that it drops in the hole um, and I can fill the cores up without um, spilling too much, you know, and then you can still scrape it across the top of that thing to fill the holes in. Yeah, good idea. You know, the next one then, where are we? Like I say, you can see they're all filled there then. Um, it's just really a picture, make up the picture so you can see, and obviously the is <laughs> over the next one, and uh, the next picture would have shown, well, somewhere along the line, it would have showed where I put some cut down flower pots over it, just so that when you're watering and doing it, don't splash everywhere. Um, you know, don't splash the uh, compost everywhere. And also, you can control the seeds because I put, well, three or four, depends on how many drop off with the size of my fingers into the centers. And then, obviously, in a few weeks' time, you trim them down to the best one. Um, that's all done, watered. And I just laid cameras of glass over it because it seemed an easy way of covering it up to warm it up. Um, yeah, I don't know whether you've got any more there, Mick, or not. Have you? No. 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 So Lovely that cheers, Rolly. That basically how I do me stump carrots. Excellent. Cheers, Mike. Cheers, now. Right, this is Mike Lynn, as in our gardening club. Uh, I couldn't come to last meeting. It was in hospital. But I put this photo on and I borrowed it. But it basically is it's her back garden. Not much of a garden, but uh, better than nothing. But uh, utilises every bit of space. I'll slap to get her when it's better. To take uh, closer photos all the way up or bits and pieces. But a uh, nice one, Lynn. Right, my little tree. I Took me a lid off, as you can see there, and then my jace fluid is soaked in, so I'm going to top them up again, like I have there. And uh, this was last week. That has been on now for a, a week since, with the bloody winds and rain crap we've had. Fruit trees at the top doing well, uh, coming into the blossom, if they haven't done already. Uh, goose gogs in the middle, they just coming through. Back into the greenhouse, uh, another shot of me cormlets. Right, this was um, a card, Aaron, our youngest, good man for Mother's Day. And this one of these where it's covered with seed, you haven't seen the seed there, just about making it out. And you just plant the card, basically. So I had to do it because obviously I've been asked to. So I'll get me brewer mixture out. Put in a larger bag, mix it up. Need a couple of pots. Because I've got big holes in the bottom. I'm going to put paper in as well. And I've got to cut that to size so it goes on the top. Nice brew going in. That's what I've done. Perfect. Another one. Give them good weighting. Because it's only paper anyway. Thin cardboard. That's going to soak up. And uh, he ain't covered too much on top. But uh, just bung as on. And just see what them two come to. So the end of the green is now is chocker as normal. Last Sunday was no Zoom. Why? Because it was Easter. Easter Sunday. And this is where we go Easter Sunday. 
down to me uh, our kids little and always puts a good spread on look at that mm -hmm. I had dinner a fowl before he went out and they said Ben with his blonde hair and as and the grandchild obviously and pet the gaffer right canners I need sorting the lot out so this one it's back to me uh, brew again. Need another good mixture. That'll do. Loads of pots. Uh, a few of these pots I had from the local nursery. Which they uh, dish out, distribute free of charge. Well, uh, that's, that's the pots I need. Obviously, when I dish them out, I've lost my pot as well. So I've got to cut him up. Exactly the same as last year. Because it's a type of pot, we are going to come up unstuck last year. It was a square pot. And it was a pain to get out. So another lesson learned, tapered, and it pours out easier. So there he is. Uh, I know I've got two there, so I'm going to cut him that road, as we can see. Just slice him off, because there is a rise on. If he's going that way or that way, might be that way, might be looking at it. So I've cut across there. I don't want to cut across that way. I've got me two on that one anyway. So just take them away. And all I'm doing is uh, opening all this up and getting the old roots and the compost off. And all that just come away. Because it's done its purpose anyway. That lot will go in there easier without that lot. Uh, I'll pack a muck in the bottom on top of the paper and then a bit of compost and I'll put my chap in. We want to not just hold him upright and then firm him in round the outside, not on top of the chap. That's the compost I want firmed in, all the growing material around side. Like any raised bed, a pot is a raised bed, they dry quicker, so help them out. And it's easier for watering as well when you do start watering dry compost. Just put the mulch on the top. And uh, when you do water, it won't splash that away. So it's Tropicana Black. 50 inches high, reddish pink. Who's that, Rog? The oh, Nick, yeah. Uh, Rog? <laughs> do you recognise <laughs> him? <laughs> right, uh, that was me with my bee suit on. Good oh, man. Oh, that's... Uh, uh, Daughter and granddaughter um, came for Easter. Is that all your own cooking there, Rog? No, that's Jill's cooking, my friend Jill. Oh. That's her, her cooking. She did a nice roast. Uh, that's um, a, the first lot of cannas that I had off you that are Good. I potted on. Brilliant. And, uh, oh yeah, that's a uh, yellow magnolia that I took cutting of the one on the right, uh, which is very slow to grow. That's a yellow magnolia. Yeah. That's another one there, um, uh, but very slow. But there, I, I'm behind it is some uh, couple of trays of onion seed. Um, I, I can't remember what they were now, um, but they're going on. I just I had some seed. I just thought I'd bung them in. Looks like a good size greenhouse, uh, Rog. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's, I built it. It's th it's uh, thirty six by twelve. Gordon Bennett. I bet you're running out of room as well. Yeah, it was a lot of work. <laughs> oh, that's the uh, I got me I got me first lot of tomato plants into into bottomless pots in the uh, on one side of the greenhouse. Um, so um. I'm, I've just got bottomless pots this year. I, I've grown them in the ground before, and I've grown them in bags, but I, I prefer this way. Yeah. Um, it keeps them tidy. And then I got to put a, I put a little, a little dribble, um, hydropot, you know, uh, what do they call it? Um, irrigation system in gravity yeah. fed. Oh. Uh. But uh, that's right. Oh, that's um, that's some zebras cross zebra. Uh, canners which I've I've just uh, germinated in the in the house, and I potted I potted them on this afternoon. I got them 
I got them above the agar now, percolating away in pots. So I'm hoping they'll, I'm hoping they'll continue to grow. Oh, I had two of them come through. Red zebra. Goodness. Yeah. How'd, how'd you get on with germination? Pretty Look, good, well, really. Oh, I've been, good. I've been, I've been, I've been very lucky. Yeah, well. I mean, I do. Um, I I do change the water every day. Yeah, and, you've got uh, it. Yeah, and uh, try and pay a bit bit of attention to cleanliness, but I'm quite pleased that they've they they've all germinated, uh, some better than others. So I've potted yeah. them all up now. So fingers oh, crossed. Excellent. Lovely, Rog. Thank you for your input. Yeah, well, thank you for all your help. Good man. Cheers, Rog. Cheers now. Another good photo of Nick. It's off the obviously internet as well. But uh, little chaps look like leaves, don't they? Nature. Yeah. Love it. Hunting dog for sale. <laughs> Corker. <laughs> That's me and Petty and Antigua. Not long after we got married. Is that your oh is that what? Oh, is that your granddaughter? That, that's the better off. Goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> Sutton Coalfield Fuchsia Society and Garden Guild. Look at this gorgeous stuff. Homemade compost. If you have large patio containers to fill, buying compost doesn't come cheap. And a lot of it is rubbish. I only have a small garden, but room for two old black plastic bins, which keeps me going. For all the know-how on compost, have a look at Mick Partner, the Compost King. And Mick will be joining us again next year to talk about canners. I'll give these a talk at a while back, obviously on composting. And I nicked this off the internet last week. I thought that's a coincidence. Because Gail, who is also Speaker Secretary, rung me up and it says, you know, we've booked you up for next year for your kind of talk. I says, yes. I says, well, can we have it next week? Which is <laughs> this Thursday. Is it Thursday or what is it? Thursday, yeah. Because they've had a speaker let them down. So I'm helping them out. So I've got that early. But that is a, a good side. That's where we have the show as well. Boston size room, that is. I don't know whether they use this for the show as well, the church hall, but a uh, good venue, good size car park, nice and flat. Uh, uh, when am I? Sun car field, that was Thursday. Day before, Wednesday the 10th, I'm at Stonnell Guard Guild. I, I was there a few years ago, four years ago, and they've got the can of growing as well. And them two talks, once I've done them two, that's it for this year. That's how bad it is. Uh, I'm now um, sending out emails. I've sent out emails to all the garden clubs, which was a, an hour from me. Now I'm sending out to all the rest. And uh, as I mentioned before, there's that many come back and they've folded. We're losing them. Right, back to chopping <coughs> the rhizome underneath. That's where you're going to get your shoes from. So that's where you want to split. Obviously, there's two on him. I've got another two in there. There might be another shoot coming up. I'd want to look for them as well. So it's just putting me normal paper plates underneath the trays. So there's two on him. Hold him upright. Normal crap. Trim him. And chop the other one straight down the middle because I've got two on him there. If I come straight down there, like there's last year's, that one and that one of the old ones. So there's got to be another extra one on that one there. So that's a first and too much crap underneath. So I'm going to lift that up and ease that lot away as well. You didn't know this. This needs one of me uh, big pots. This is one of my florist buckets, which I remember. If you was watching a couple of months ago, I went to the local florist. Can you turn your speakers off, please? 
Pardon? Lizzie, oh, you got your speaker on. Can you turn it off, Ped? So these are the florist buckets which I borrowed. If I hadn't had a bin them and I've cleaned them out, put holes in the bottom. Perfect. Now I'm not wasting my own pot. I'm uh, utilising a free pot. So I'm recycling as well. Bit of muck under him, help him out. Hold him upright. So all that crap come away from him. Uh, these I had from China a couple of years ago. Uh, I'm, I'm crap in the sense because I'm made from bamboo. They only last one growing season. I thought I ain't going to use them again, but I've got them anyway, so I'm going to use them. Other people can have them. So just tell him what they are. Right, just having a look around this chap, turn him around, see if he got any extra shoots on. Another one bunged in. So out of one plant, I've got four there. This stuff is good in the raised bed. As you can see there, the top raised bed. I'm slowly working my way across. Next one. Get him out easy enough as well. To say none of these canners have been watered since they got up. Um, or not, not got up, but since the pot was put into the, the greenhouse last year. I chopped them off, put them in the greenhouse, and they've been dry ever since. And everyone I've turned over, there's a bit of moisture on the bottom, and I'm, I'm getting worms off. There's a good horde of worms there. So looking at these chaps, you know, see there's a couple of shoots coming through. He's telling you, sort me out, pop me on. So I'm going to cut all the, the crap off. Because you ain't going to get a new shoot from the old one. Like there's a new one coming through. So these I'm going to cut off. Don't want them. Also, this was a, a newish shoot, but he'd he done crap on the top. So I thought, oh, you, you ain't going to grow to anything if I leave you, so I'm going to chop you. And the crap's still in there. So I thought, right, common sense, I'm going to chop you again. So that was a clean cut, but that's in focus, so that one ain't. So there's the one I've just chopped off. So I've got whatever that is, whatever disease that is, virus, whatever, I've got rid of it because that's clean. Now I've got a... a uh, Seal that cut. So runny honey, because it's on the top of it. Perfect. Now I'm going to slice the chap. I've had it around the bottom. So I know he's coming up, as you can see there. There's one on the other side here. There's another knuckle. That's another one there. So I've got one that side and one there. And the same on that one. And there's one on that one. So out of that one, I've got three lots, three different size pots. Which is three different size chaps going in. Same again, bit of paper underneath, then a uh, bit of muck. I'll pack a muck, which is no strength in it, so it ain't going to burn the roots, but it is a good brew, good manure, good feed. I mean, there's a bit of feed in me, me growing medium anyway. Same as him. Help them out, put a bit of a uh, mulch on the top, which is my rabbit book. So there's many rabbit pellets in there, that's another bonus. So there's another good feed. And then bung my new labels in. This was an odd one, because we had an uh, odd seed. Because the seed I had from made in Canada, uh, was it's field pollination, open field pollination is, is seed, meaning... He just, he just lets nature, the bees, get on with it. So you're going to have cross-pollination. But the good thing about that, you're going to have an odden, which is there, odden. And he was a yellow with red freckles. And he was a corker. He's one of the best ones I've had. So he ain't really got a name. Well, he has. He's a bloody odden. But he was 53 years old. And he was a cork. So he got a sort in that as well. Uh, because there was no frost forecast, I thought, well, I'm going to put them in there because they got a bit of protection from the wind. They've got the trellis there, the green ass this side. So I'm going to leave them outside. I think it's going down to 
eight was the, the minimum. I thought they can cope with that. Right, another one I took out. More worms. So I holded them together. Right, there's a rhizo. Still course eat very well. One of the days I'll get all the compost off, wash it, swill it off. The rhizo just goes horizontal. And there's another one coming through. But, but be careful teasing the compost from around here because that's where you get the, the roots come down. Obviously, he's got a good for daylight. So he come down and start doing up again. But this lot just tease them off. And there is a hole in the middle. And that's where I start and then work outside. So you see what I'm taking out. But I'm still being careful just in case there's a shoot coming out. Uh, right, I'm going straight down the middle with him. You've got to be cruel to be kind. Right, that slides through him. Them two have some sealing with honey as well. So I've got him and I've got him. There's another one coming through there and one there. I'm just saying, keep them upright. Clear patra, red, yellow, uh, 30 inches high. So that was last year's flower. Uh, worms again from the base. There's a new shoot coming through. So you've got to be careful taking the gum off the bottom. So I'll get two out of that one. First of all, the worms, worms go back in the bin. And there's another one there. So I'll probably go down there. Yeah. And just slice them up. Hold them upright, fill them up. And uh, also at the end, when I've finished, I look after the tops as well. So he has just got a tepid rainwater with a, a, a nice little mixture of feed in there. Epsom salts this time. No, I've just wiped all the, the dust and the crap off. And that leaves it nice and shiny. Look after the chap. Right, let's put that laying down. Give him a good soaking. Obviously, greenhouse temperature. And just going through the lot. That's a better photo. See the rise on there. It's just like a tuber, isn't it? Like a dahlia or a whatever. And there's another shoot coming off there. Get through these lot. Right, this one, I thought, let's, let's try it. This is where I want to try to clean it up all together, just to show you the rhizo and the L that get it. So I thought if I soak him first and keep soaking him, and I was doing this all afternoon, and he was just soaking up the water, and in, in the end I get up, because I, I was thinking the soil would just come away. No, it won't. Yeah, that's better photo. You can see the sun on me, Bobby's now with me. And I even did it overnight, soaking him, and he didn't do nothing. Right, started putting these back in the tunnel because they forecast frost. Couldn't forecast my Irish. All back in the greenhouse. I had to go next door to work. Uh, I thought we had frogs born in one of the strappers. I ain't got many photos looking at my garden from next door. So I took that one just a quick perv. Little last week, Bougainvillea. Got the best one there, standard. And these are tenor and all, all the citrus. Standard again. Well, I mean, I've kept him, but he wore very good. So I bought him back and uh, go back on that one. I had him from middle uh, a couple of months back. So I bought him out from upstairs to all, and he's going to have a good weight and all. I don't see no wind. Sun's on him. Start with him first. And then going to get him. Right, this is what I get up on. So I am going to slice through him. Which we've done there. Can I cut through there because I've got a shoot? No, because there's no roots on there. All these roots are the old ones. So lead him where he is. Because they're going to do so, or you're going to kill it. There's that, Ben. He's a good lad. Save me good up there, buddy. 
killing myself. Right, I'm looking at round all around this one. See when I'm going to split in, which is there. So I've got one that side and one this side. He do look very good on him, so I'm just going to scrape him off, and he still looks crap. So if I've done it before, I'll do it again. I'm going to cut through him. It's nice and clean. In fact, I cut another one off because there's still a bit on the, the rim there. And all I did, get some runny honey and clear uh, seal him as well. Look after the chap. If I don't get away with it, I don't get away with it, but I've tried it. Well, I've taken all the old roots off again. And uh, I've got one on there. And the last one is two good ones. Bigger pots, normal thing. Cut me little uh, papers. Bit of muck under him, and a bit of my compost, and then bung him in upright. So I've got two shoots on him. Cover him as norm. Last one. He's a big one anyway, so he's going straight into a big pot. The smaller the pot at two is too small, as you can see. So he went to the bigger. And there's Bougainvillea, which is the only standard one I could get there, which is what I want. He's going to be okay for a bit. Bung him back in. Making these ready for the show day. These are the little tickets for need for when people uh, enter some of the names is on there. And they put face down, which means that side has got their class number. So nobody knows who's bunged them in. We're going to start preparing now, ready for the show. Right, this was last Thursday, our speaker. He's a good lad. Um, I've had him uh, four times now. He's got his own nursery. Uh, you talk to About an hour and a half way up north. In fact, I was, I was near there last week. Justin. He, he's, he was at his market half seven on the morning. He went back home, loaded this lock up and come straight out. He, he's a good lad. He's a workaholic. I love him. But uh, the stuff he, he brings, he talks about everything, explains everything. But we have him, uh, he gives a talk every season. And the next talk we got him for, is for winter. So that'll be the four seasons. Uh, and then I'll just start again. Because people want the plants. And he lets them have them, have them chip. But he's brilliant. And he's a good loff and all, which is off the battle. This is uh, half past seven. We don't kick off till eight. And that's uh, us just unloading him. But a uh, good size room is posting. And there's a wenches down the bottom. They serve down the trading sheds from seven to uh, 20 to eight, which means we get more customers. Paul, I've nearly taught the missus into letting me go bowling. No. Yes. I'm now starting looking for balls. No, I'm going to have to go, you know that. <laughs> but, uh... I want to go and watch that. That's me uh, ready for... Obviously, he's going to use this table when he's selling his wares. But that's <laughs> me with all my gum ready to flog. There's my can as I was dishing out for the members' class. Uh, Cape gooseberries. I'll flog them a quid each. Uh, seed, loads of seed going out. Uh, different bits of seed. And there's also sweet pea seed. My spare exhibition sweet, sweet pea seed. Which turned out perfect because the ne uh, that morning is when I sold mine. Ready for our show, hopefully. So these lot who was having them, uh, I think there was a quid each as well. Two packets of exhibition mixed. So once I got that cleared out, then uh, our chase could get, uh, Justin could get going. There's the ones, Eagle Sweet Peas, highly perfumed. That's what I wanted. And they, they were the different ones. Perfect. But he's a, a good speaker. He don't need the mic. He's got a wazzing on him. And uh, he'll, he'll uh, shout anybody. Well, they will gob off at him. 
Where's your good lad? Uh, we've got your half time. Have a break. Uh, raffle. And the grub. And then he gives us another Q&A after. And starts. Although he's, he's selling with the interval. He flogs at the end as well. What a brilliant night. That was at the interval. Give me two cobs first. Put them behind him. So we don't dish out. Uh, that's a raffle prize. I always take a raffle prize in. Plus, we have donated stuff. People helping us out. I'm good. And uh, I'm cobs and cheese. And there's mustard good with them, cheese and onion. 91. They, they come with a membership, so they get uh, the free entry as well. And that was the sure, interval. Yeah. Everybody can uh, empty the tables and stuff in, in the car, stock up at the bar again. Tommy's still got the, the mic on. Can you turn them off, please? Where's your good lad? He does his proud. That's why I've got him back again. Paul's doing some um, eggplants. So I said, is, is this the, the strain you're doing? Somebody's got a mic on. Could you turn it off for us? Can anybody see who's got it on? Yeah, Roger, it's you that's playing up with your mic. Roger Coombs. I get a talker to a garden club uh, two years ago, and this was on their raffle prize. Well, I was flogging it. I only wanted two quid, no, I did. So that's what it looks like. Ain't flowered since. Roger. When you come back from your piddle. Right, I'll put back in two now. shakes, Mick. Hey, here you are. The cutbacks now with the council. This is what uh, they're putting the grass. I'm cutting it and leaving it instead of taking it. And the, the skid marks with the mower and the well, the state that bloody left it anyway. This is what I come back from our club, Graham Thomas, and a couple of them to tell area. Nice little chaps. And I won that one in, in the raffle. No answers. You donated about four plants in the raffle as well. He's a good lad. So on the night, no, we made uh, 40 quid on the raffle, 15 quid on the footy toad. Got a couple of new members. Uh, <coughs> for doing the, the shed, them are the two signs I put upside uh, at the top of the drive, advertising that the, the sheds are out. But it was bloody windy, that day. I, don't, I told him not to put them out. So that's all ready for them. Took the money back in for them. Right, my old towel in the compost. That just, well, as you can see there, the worms have eaten their way through it. So I've got to replace that. But that old towel covered over there. Roger, me all back yet? Oh, I could ring him, but I can't see. He's left. He's left. <sighs> What I found out, I don't know whether it's on this lot or my next lot, I'm going to put on ne uh, next week. But I found an old nappy, how they used to be before uh, these bloody things we sell at airport. And it's perfect. That will replace my towel. I'm getting them back in. Because I've got a few uh, pot worms, the little white chaps. They are goodies, but you don't want too many. And there's too many there, so I'm going to sort them out with a fistful of wood burner ash. Let's sort them out. Oh, look at this red currant jam, old maid. Mm. Gooseberry jam on the next one, old maid. Mm. Anybody recognize them? Remember them? Yeah, well, I remember them. them from bloody moons ago. Obviously, I'm sorting through me crap. I've had a, a wall enough pet. I've got to sort through me crap. Stay up, keep the peace. 
I've, I've found some crap at all. So I'm planting these to add my new little chaps that be going in there. And I'll add a, a bulb, obviously a tulip miss, so he's going in that gap. I found that and all. Danger pole drop for him and only. God knows how I bought that back. Express and start when I used to be in. Top of the ladder for veg. I ain't got many photos of me in a fireman outfit. This was the old uh, firepower, obviously, the magazine used to get. Nuns on the run. Four of us did it from our zone. 100 firefighters handcuffed in pairs, dressed as nuns, dropped off at Land's End or Edinburgh with no money and 48 hours to return to HQ. This was the task sector to raise money from Project Icarus in September. The event was usually successful and the project is well on its way to raising underground. Here's a section of photographs taken on the nun's return. That was going back. Well, they didn't tell you. Uh, that's me, mate, Nick. Him and Roger, who's already left, who's both on Red Watch, they legged it to um, Edinburgh. And me and mate Chris were seeming a bit. We were dropped off at Land's End. But when you're dropped off, obviously, you, you ain't you got nothing. We, we weren't allowed to carry... Well, we hadn't got bloody phones in, mobile. You couldn't carry any money on you whatsoever. All you could carry was your bucket for collecting money for the charity. But coppers was on the lookout for you. Because if coppers saw you, they could take you to their nick and lock you up for six hours and then release you to make it harder for you. So we was up against the coppers as well. Buggers. So that was a screenshot there. Uh, there's Chris who I went with. So me and him was handcuffed together. So over 48 hours, whenever we were, if I wanted a piddle in the middle of the night, I had to give him a kick. And I had to take him with me and all. But we said, this is a, a photo before we legged it. Because I, I got a winch to make the, the suits for us. And obviously we got sponsors, macro, same prison, all this crap. But uh, just using a bit of rope. Just pretend we got handcuffs. But we knew that quite a few of them, uh, they, they was going to undo themselves on a night. And we says, that's cheating. We're going to do it. We're going to stay handcuffed for the 48 hours. And we did. We did it. But we, we was, it was brilliant. We was permanently pissed. Uh, from Land's End, we got, we got a lift, luckily, all the way to Bristol. <coughs> that, that was Friday, 2 o'clock. I think Friday afternoon, and by three o'clock we would go just bombing around the boozer. I think it was Weatherspoons. Of course, everybody was going in because it was Friday, finishing Friday. We was bloody Kaloid. The bucket was half full, and uh, any road, brilliant night. Plus, we have a load of uh, baddies as well. Oh, look, food again. Air fried steak, low. Slow cooked onion rings, gravy because it's not a salad. Boston, England women, Boston game. I think it's one one at the end. One is me and Highness again. You can see the skid marks where the the wagon, uh, the lawnmower was stuck in the bloody mud. And that's where they throw the some of the grass buttons in the middle, of course, highness. Bloody has a field day in there. Right, I'm gonna get this chap out. But I can't put him here down this end. Was miss on the end of these, that's where Miss Exhibition Sweet Peas are going. I've got one there. As you can see. I've got one there. I've got one there. And I've just put one little end in there. Was I got from Lidl last week? So he's going at the side of him. So there'll be one going this road and one going that road. Just go back on that. There's me a tree that I chopped. So that's me stump. So that is why this is now open. So he's going in the side of here. So there's a chap. That's where I'm going to go in. Right, take him out of the pot. There's mould. Honeysuckle climbing, scented. Sells all summer, I don't know, like six quid. 
perfect. There. Make me all perfect. Bit bigger than what I want, because what's going in there is a bit of alpaca book. Yes. Lovely pellets. Perfect. And the worms that come out of there, which I'll do, I've got, I've got in there anyway, because I've got a good brew on there to top dressing. That goes back in there. And that is just uh, watered. And then I'll come back, put some more on. So I'm not pressing down. We're going to tie this chap up now, which I have done. I'll start with a little bottle first, then the bigger. Steve, this is your um, city of Portland. There's a new shoot. There's another one there. It still ain't root bound yet. That's why he's still in that pod. Just to say he's doing well. So he's a good one. Right, I've got a top dress. So I've just put a bit of straw in rabbit book on. I'm now going to put wood chip on top of him. Give that a good soak. Look after it. Oh, Christ. Just pretend he's, um, it's on his suckle. Right, that's uh, secured him in. That lot will go that way. Flat pack Easter egg. Ikea. Love it. Brilliant. Would anybody do that train journey? It's a nice train journey on the south coast, isn't it? Through uh, Newton Abbott. Oh, I don't think I'd like that. Look at that. Mm. Beautiful. Darren Rudge uh, he's given us a, a few talks. He's a good lad. Saturday's lecture for our learners on RHS2 Level 2, practical autocultural, including composting techniques, with special reference to you, Mick Foley. Thank you very much, sir. So, he, obviously, he's talking about odd, cold, worm, and bagashi. And I, I'm his worm man. He's a good lad. We're going to him later on in the year and all. You, Gordon, I'm getting quite a, a good bit of stuff out. Goji Berry. I try that up the kids with the school, but that's when they first come out, and, and uh, that would be better now. So I've had another dollop there. And I keep getting these. In my junk box. I'm obviously, I ain't going to open them. Just in case I get jumped. But that's what I want to get next year. Uh, that wind we've had yesterday and today is blowing one of my pots off over. My heavy pots. Oh, yeah. Right, this is another one uh, of canners being split. And every shoot, you can see this coming through there. He's just cut, sliced it off, and he's trying it with his canners. Good. Huh? We don't know them all, but we owe them all. Supposed to. Instead of giving all our MPs a pay rise, let's all clap instead. Common sense, isn't it? And that's it, people. That's past the nice hour. Nice one, Mick. 